God, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, stand up and give him praise. For those of you that are out in the lobby, come on in. For those of you who are on the way, there's plenty of time. We're blessed and we're happy to have you here today at Turning Point Fellowship. Welcome, welcome everyone to our Sunday service. And as we gather today to honor the Lord and come together and show reverence and just shake it off. If you had one of those work weeks where you were like, I can't wait till Thursday, I can't wait till Sunday, I want to be there, I want, I want to be at the altar, I want, I want change, then you're in the right place. Come on, come on out, <laughs> come on in. All right, um, we're going to get started <clears throat> with some announcements. Thank you, Father, thank you, Lord. <laughs> okay, so... On the 31st of October, that's a Tuesday, we have our uh, Turning Point Fellowship Harvest Festival. So come on out. It's a uh, trunk or treat style, right? Trunk or treat, uh, free candy, free food, free games, uh, 5.30 to 9 p.m. So, um, you know, your kids usually stay anyway, so they'll be good the next day. Uh, it's not too late, you know, we'll get you out of here in a timely matter, but come on out um, and just have some fellowship, and then you get to meet some people from this neighborhood. We have all these people around here that, you know, they see things going on, they see activity out here in the parking lot, they see, you know, they want to know what's going on at Turning Point Fellowship, and we get to share the word of the Lord with them and just meet someone new and welcome them in and tell them about what we do here. So come on out. <clears throat> on the 31st of October. <clears throat> um, next, uh, Men's Advance 2023. <laughs> Men's Advance. You already know um, something we do every year around that same time. This year is November 17th through the 19th, a Friday through a Sunday, 17th through the 19th of November 23. Uh, it is $200 per person, and we ask that you get a $50 deposit into um, Brother Fred, Brother Andy Mayer as well. Yes, and then next we have our Women of Virtue Christmas Luncheon. That is... Saturday, December 9th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Our special guest speaker will be Vanicia Tapia. So come on out, women. Come be a part of what the Turning Point Women of Virtue are doing. And uh, you can RSVP. They want that RSVP to be uh, via a text message with Sister Bobby or Sister Margarita. And if you need that information after service, you can... Um, Someone will get that number for you. Uh, we're going to come together now as we enter in. And we one more event that we have. <laughs> so we're doing uh, baptisms. Baptisms. Uh, next. That's next Saturday. That's next Saturday, uh, October 28th. Um, the Bible in Acts 2, verses 38 through 39 says, um, And Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and your children, and to all who are afar off as many as the Lord our God will call. So that's a promise right there to you and your children. Why wouldn't you want to come on out next Saturday, October 28th? That's going to be at Pastor Joe's house. Uh, there's a swimming pool there for baptisms, and you can come, um, you know, with dressed accordingly to, to be baptized. That's in... Um, We'll get that addressed to you if you need it after service. All right. 
So that is all we have for announcements as we enter in. Just uh, if you're not already, please stand, <clears throat> bow your head in reverence to the Lord. <sighs> Lord, we thank you, Father, and we praise you, Lord. We're here to honor you today, Lord. You give us life, Father God. You give us hope. You are the glory in this world, Lord. You're the light when there's darkness, Father God. We, we run towards you. We should be yearning for the things of God. We thank you and we praise you for what you're doing in our lives and the lives of all that are here hearing your word, Lord. For those of you who are on the way, we pray that there's a word for you today that your spiritual ears and eyes will be open. We thank you and we bless your name. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on up, family. We begin our praise and worship. Come on up. Come on up and join us at the altar. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Gozate, gozate. Get excited, get excited. Ready to bless the Lord? We're ready to bless the Lord. Church is alive. The church is alive. This is what it sounds like. 
This is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. Hallelujah. This is what it feels like when the church is alive. The church is alive. This is what it sounds like. This is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. And this is what it feels like when the church is alive. Come on, put your hands church together. Church is alive. This is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like, and this is what it feels like when the church is alive. The church is alive. Our hope, our hope forever in the name of Jesus. We are free and you are with us. The church is alive. The church is alive. Our hope, our hope Are free and you are with us. The church is alive. The church is alive. And the church is alive. The church is alive. When the church is alive. The church is alive. Turning point is alive. The church is alive. Turning point is alive. The church is alive. When the church is alive. Hallelujah, we are alive in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory to you. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. There's freedom in this place. Freedom in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Alabale, alabale. I want you to know that you're in the right place. Whatever battle you're going through, you're in the right place. Whatever you're going through, you're in the right place. If you thought about turning around and not making it, you're in the right place today. So I encourage you to just open up your heart. Come to the altar and ask, fill me, Father, today. Bye, Mom. 
look like. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Surrounded by your love. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Surrounded by your blessings. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Surrounded by your blessings. My victory. My victory's in Jesus' name. My victory's in Jesus' name. My victory's in Jesus' name. Praise and worship. Victory this right now. This is how we fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how my victories in Jesus' name. My victories. My victory, you have victory in, in the Jesus. name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My Shout it out. My victory in Jesus' name. 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 Victories in Jesus' name. My 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 victories in Jesus' name. One more time. My victories in Jesus' name. This is how I find my battles. 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 This is how it may look like. It may look like. Surrounded, but I'm 
just worship him, just worship him. Yes, Father. Yes, Lord. You are everything to us. You did a finished work in my life. You're not done with us yet. We glorify and we praise the Lord. Surrounded by your presence. Surrounded by your love. Yes, Jesus. We lift a song of praise to you. We lift a song of praise to you. We lift a song of praise to you. Because this is how I find my battle. Come on, sing it up. This is how I find my battle. This is how I find my battles. This is how. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find Go on, my sing it up. battles. This is how I find my battles. Come on, sing it up. This is how. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. You are in the midst of our battles. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. This is how you fight your battles right here. Right here on the altar. Right here through your worship. Battles through the kids. The enemy's trying to get your kids. This is how you fight it right here. The enemy's trying to turn between your marriage. This is how you fight it right here. The enemy's trying to put you down. Put emptiness, loneliness in your mind. This is how you fight it right here. Depression. This is how you fight it. That sickness right here. You give it all to him right here. Come on. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I will magnify the Lord, my God who was and is to come. I will lift my hand, surrender all to Him. Oh. 
the Lamb who was slain. Jesus. 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 Your blood has made a way for me. Jesus. Jesus. Your sacrifice has set me free. Jesus. Jesus. Your blood is made a way for me, Jesus, Jesus, your sacrifice. The bell has been torn. The bell has been torn. The bell has been torn. The curse is broken. Hallelujah. The bell has been torn. The bell has been torn. The curse is broken. The bell has been torn. The bell has been torn. The curse is broken. Oh, the curse is broken. We are free by His blood. Set free is free indeed. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. And it can only be done by your blood, by your blood. Only by the blood. Only by the blood of Jesus. Only by the blood of Jesus. Only by the blood of Jesus. Only by the blood of Jesus, only by the blood of Jesus, we can be saved. Only by the blood of Jesus, 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 we can be saved. Only by the blood of Jesus. Only by the blood of Por la sangre de Jesús. Por la sangre de Jesús. We can be saved. Only by, only by the blood of Jesus. Esta sangre preciosa. Only by the blood of Jesus. Only by the blood of Jesus. We can be only saved. By only by the blood of Jesus. Only by the blood of Jesus. Only by the blood of Jesus we can be saved. Only by the blood. Only by the blood of Jesus. Only by the blood of Jesus. Only by the blood of Jesus we can be saved. The bell has been torn. The bell has been torn. The curse is broken. curse is broken. How many can you praise God for that? And your kids don't have to live your life. Your kids will not go through what you went through. That your life is changed forevermore.
For your blood has set us free, Father. We thank you, Jesus. Delivered by the name of Jesus. He gave you the glory, Lord. Oh, we praise the holy name. We praise that name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, get your breakthrough. Come on. Only by the blood of Jesus. Only by the blood of Jesus. Only by the blood of Jesus. We can be saved. Only by the blood of Jesus. Only by the blood of Jesus. Only by the blood of Jesus. We can be saved. Only by the blood of Jesus. Only by the blood of Jesus. Only by the blood of Jesus. We can be saved. Only by the blood of Jesus. Only by the blood of Jesus. Only by the blood of Jesus. We can be saved. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. <laughs> I tell you, what a joy it is to be here in the presence of the Lord. Psalm 122 says, and I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. How many of you are happy today? How many of you are rejoicing today that you're in the house of the Lord? You could have easily woken up somewhere else, in a hospital bed, in a cell block. A lot of us, a lot of people didn't wake up. A lot of people can't hear today. A lot of people can't see today. A lot of people can't feel today. Come on. It's only through the mercy and the grace of God that we're here. And we're here to rejoice. We're here to thank our Father for all he's done. For us. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> we could go ahead and uh, have our seats. We're going to continue our form of worship here with our tithes, our offering. It's been so, so good to us. Word tells us to give with a joyful heart, to give with a grateful heart. I tell you, I have so much to be grateful for. I tell you, I uh, I was out last week, but I thank God. I praise God. My pastor prophesied over me because when this time of season came around, baseball season for me, I became a part-time Christian. Come on. <laughs> I became a part-time Christian. I became a full-time coach. Because I love the game of baseball. And baseball was more important to me back then in those days. But my pastor, he prophesied 10, 12 years ago. So I was coaching my grandson. And he said, God will allow you to see him play at a higher level. I don't know. I don't understand if maybe he knew exactly what he was saying. But I tell you what, God is true to his word. Because this word tells me if you commit your ways to the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. And that has been one desire of mine. My grandson is going to graduate this year from Westcliff University playing baseball. <laughs> I was out last weekend because God has always gives you more than enough and he's more than sufficient. I missed last weekend because they had family day for my granddaughter's softball team at the University of New Mexico, where she is on scholarship there. So God is continuing to bless me as we commit our ways. God knows what those desires are. He knows what you're holding in. So this here is a form of commitment right now. You know, we all know that the tithe belongs to God. That's, we've been taught that here at Turning Point. So there should be no excuse. There should be no reason for not doing it. But the offering that we give, the offering that we give is how we thank our Lord. We thank him through our worship. We thank him through our praise. We thank him through our obedience to his word, to his word, not Oz's word. God's word says that man makes his plans, but the Lord directs his steps. I pray that he's directing each and every one of you right now as we give, to give out of bountiful because we all have more than enough. These ushers here, these young men, will go ahead and pass out envelopes. Please raise your hand up high. For those of you that didn't bring cash or a check, we have our QR code up there and you can go ahead and give. We also can give by phone and by text and that number is 714-477-7736. One more time. 714-477-7736. As you give, remind you or remind yourselves of what God has done in your life. Because I tell you, for me, nothing I can put in that bucket will give me the joy of seeing my grandchildren continue their education, but not only that, but doing what they love. Once playing baseball, Alina plays softball. I've got two more that are graduating this year, a soccer player and another baseball player. And I just continue to believe that the Lord will guide their steps and direct their paths. So as I said, there's no amount of money that I can put in here that would bring me joy as that, but just to thank God and what he's allowed me to see and believe that he is faithful. He is true to his word. Okay, we have one quick announcement uh, that pertains to uh, uh, tithe and offering. Here's Odessa. Hi, good morning, family. I just want to say if you are giving through ShareFaith, um, I don't know if some of you have noticed, but they changed the face of the way that the giving is go is to be given. 
So when you first send your text to the phone number, when you push give and you click that link, the first tab is a recurring charge, which you're allowing them to continuously charge your card or that you will be giving whatever selected date you have. So I just wanna remind you guys, you need to click on the next tab, which is give, and that's the one-time give. So, I mean, we are more than happy that if you would love to give reoccurring, let's give reoccurring so we can always make sure it's being taken out and you're giving on to the Lord. But if at this time that's not something you can do, just make sure you click on that second tab so it's a one-time give. Um, if you think that you have hit the reoccurring charge and it's charging your bank, please see me after service because we can remove that from your account. Um, I'll be in the foyer after service um, so we can take that off for you. But I just want to remind you that if that to make sure you click that second tab if you only would like to give this one time. Thank you. and give. Thank you. Yeah. 
God is faithful to his word. His word will go out and will accomplish and produce everything that he's called it to do. It will not come back to him void. We just need to stand on God's word. God says, I have hidden God's word in my heart. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. At this time, I'd like to call up my beautiful bride as we pray for guys. We pray for this offering. Thank you, Jesus. In a couple of months, we're going to be celebrating 48 years. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Thank you, Jesus. If you would all stretch your hands forth and come in agreement with me. Father, we just come before you right now, Father. Father, we just thank you, Father. We give you all the honor and all the glory, Lord, for allowing us once again, Father, to give into your kingdom, Father. Father, we just pray, Father, that you give wisdom, discernment, Father, to our pastor, to the board, Father, to the leadership here at your church, Turning Point Fellowship, Father, that these funds would be allocated, that your word will continue to go forth, Father. And as your word goes forth, Father, the people would come, Father, that these pews would be filled, Father, Ah, uh, Father, that they would come and experience your love, Father, your joy, your gladness, Father. Father, we just thank you that each and every need here at Turning Point Fellowship is met according to your riches and glory, Lord. Father, we thank you for those that gave, Father, for those that had a heart to give, Father. That you give a sermon, Father. So what did you have your say, Lord? Holy One, that we pray, pray that the continuous success that we have here, Father, is only because of you, Father, because of what you've put in our hearts, Father. You've given our pastor the vision, Father. Let us become a part of that vision, Father, yes. that we would go out and till the land, Father, yes. <laughs> that we would water the soil, Father. And, Father, we may not reap, Father, but we know that someone will, Lord. And we thank you for that, that lives are being changed here at Turning Point Fellowship, Father. And as we continue, Father, to go forth in your name, Lord, that you just continue to bless us, Father. Bless this congregation, Lord. And we just give you all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. At this time, we're going to go ahead and dismiss our worship team. Hallelujah. Well, we're still standing. Let's go ahead and dismiss, dismiss our children, the youth, as they go to class. Come on, people. Give them a round of applause. You know, come on. If we don't, if we don't support them, if we don't applaud them, someone will. Someone will. You know, there's an enemy out there that he's just craving to get into them. So give him a hand. Come on, rejoice. Rejoice in what God has blessed you with. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to go ahead and bring our pastor forth, Pastor Angel Baruch.
to profess the word, you're going to have victory. You're going to overcome. You know, you may, be, uh, you may be sorrowful. You may be hurt or bitter, whatever it may be. God will have that thing work out. The Bible says that all things, we just saying, all things work out for the good. Amen. For those who love him and for those who are called according to his purpose, it all works out. Amen. We live by faith and not by sight. We don't live by our emotions. We don't live by our thoughts. We have those. We have those, but they no longer rule us. Amen. As Christians, as new born again people in Christ, we can't allow to have our, ma- our emotions rule. People get in trouble because of their emotions. They say things because of their emotions. Amen. A lot of people that don't have a renewed mind, they're going to speak whatever they want to speak and how they want to speak it and when they want to speak it. And that's not the way we operate as Christians. We should have the strength within us, right? Because we say greater is he that lives in me than, than he that lives in the world. So we have to learn how to control our tongue. We got to learn how to control our thoughts, casting down every thought, every high imagination that comes against the knowledge of God, casting those things down. When negative thoughts come up, you can cast those things down. When you want to say something that doesn't line up with the word of God, you can cast those things down. The enemy doesn't have power over you. Some of you guys think that the enemy has power, not over you, not as a believer. He has, he has power over the world, but we're not of this world. Amen. We belong to the kingdom of God. So we have the power to overcome. You don't have what you say. What you speak about most is what's going to come to you. You know, you're, you're attractive to your words. And your words are attracted to you. And that's why when, when you find people of your own kind of faith, if it be positive or negative faith, you're going to find those people. Gossips, you're going to find gossips. If you have a group of uh, two of your gossips, you're gonna have the uh, you're gonna find the other gossips. The, if you find people who uh, feel sorry for themselves, one or two of them, it, you're gonna find feel sorry for me people. You know what I mean? People that are always walk around it's snow, it's always raining on them. It's always raining. You know, you're gonna find those kind of people. You know, every, if, if you're a complainer and a, 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 a more a, a, a one who mourns. Uh, murmurs, I'm sorry, one who uh, murmurs, if, if you're one of those people, you're going to find those people. And they're going to find you. First thing that comes out is just complaining. Instead of encouraging one another, instead of building up one another, we complain. Wake up in the morning. It's sunny. It's a nice day. It's, a, it's 75, 76 degrees today. That's a beautiful day. And some of us act like it's raining <laughs> out there. Oh, my God, the sun's out. Can you believe it? The sun. No, you should be glad that the sun's out. Amen? <laughs> and not just the sun, the physical sin, but the sun that lives inside of us. Yeah. The sun, Jesus Christ, that he lives in you. <laughs> you know, amen? Uh, we were singing that song, uh, uh, this is how I fight my battle. Uh, you guys got to learn how to fight. Yeah. Not with your fists, not taking off your earrings and throwing your all. None of that kind of stuff. That's old stuff. That stuff is already dead. I'm talking about with our worship, our praise. This is how you, this is how you fight your battles. This is how you overcome. Coming to the altar, singing a song, stepping out in the, in the center of your uh, uh, the openings, aisles, thank you, the aisles, just doing something by faith, doing something you've never done before. What about jumping? You know, it's, we're, a bunch of, we're supposed to be a bunch of uh, uh, Pentecostal people. You know, we're not a Pentecostal church, but, you know, we got those actions. Amen? Amen. We got that faith. I started jumping up and down and running around the house because God told me by spirit, he told me, run, angel, Run. And I was just like Ted, standing right there behind the pastor, like, I am running nowhere. These people are going to think I'm crazy. But I took off running one day. And I took off running. And, every, and now God has revealed it to me that every time I run, stuff falls off of me. Bitterness, lying, cheating, anger, all that, uh, you know, not being happy, all that stuff, ungrateful. 
unthankful, all that stuff just starts dropping off of you and you begin to live a whole new life. And one, one of my mentors from my first year, I've been saved for 29 years, and uh, when he first uh, started mentoring me, I told him, I said, I feel like jumping. I want to jump. And he says, what did the Lord tell you? I said, to jump. He said, just jump. You ain't got to jump around like a little bean or nothing like that. Just jump one time, brother. He says, and see what happens. And that's what I did. I just, back then I could jump a lot higher, you know, but... <laughs> But I, but I jumped. I jumped just one time, you know. And it, was it awkward? Heck yeah. Was it tripping? Heck yeah. It was, but it set me free, Joanne. I got set free with the jump. I'm like this. And then all of a sudden, I just started jumping up and down. And you see that our men that come here, you know, they know what it is, right? To come to the altar, huh? The first thing we do, our men do, is come to the altar. They know that. That's how we should come. If we're grateful to God and thankful to God for the lives that we live today, the truth that we have living in us, because we all used to live a lie. All right, about five of you still living in lies. You know, but no, you know, <laughs> we used to live in a lie. Now it's time. It's time to live in the truth. It's time to go forward in the truth by the Spirit of God. Amen? So I just want to encourage you guys here today. When we give the gospel, when we begin to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ, open your ears. You have to say that. Father, I open my ear. You have to say that. I can't say it for you. I, I can't believe it for you. As much as I want to believe it for you, much as I want to uh, uh, prophesy over your life and hope it would be like that, you know, it's up to you to receive it. There's people that get prophesied their whole lives, and they never operate in that prophecy. So it does no good. It does do no good if you read the word and you study the word, but you don't apply it to your life. What good does it do you? What good does it do us to get to church and we don't apply it? We walk out of here and we're fighting in the car. We're fighting at home. We're arguing with our kids. We're arguing with our coworkers. What good does it do? It did nothing for us then. The word of God has power. It's just not a good book. This is a book of life. It will add life to you, amen? It'll change your whole life. It changed my life. 29 years ago, it changed my life. It continues even now. Even now, I was up 5 o'clock in the morning praying and reading. And I could just sense God doing a work in my life. And that's what I desire for a new change. I don't want to just come to church and just, here we are. Again, Sunday, I, I hope he's done on time today. I hope, he does, you know, I hope the Holy Ghost don't hit him or nothing like that. I hope the Holy Spirit don't start moving or nothing like that. Because then we're going to be here and the football game's coming at 1 o'clock. I got to go get my gear on. You know, I got to go get the carne asada. We're more important. We think about that stuff more than we do about how am I going to get fed? Amen. Amen? We need the word. I know I need the word every day of my life. I need it. Or I'm going to remain the same man. You guys wouldn't like pastor if I was a, a fleshly man. If I was a carnal man, you wouldn't like me. We wouldn't get along. I'm looking at people. I know we wouldn't get along. I know we wouldn't get along. You know? I didn't have a lot of friends. I told you guys that all the time. But if God touch, gets a hold of us, he makes enemies become friends. They'll like you from afar, amen? They will. And we've got we to gotta learn to practice what we read, what we say. Let's put this word into action. Amen? So if you have your Bibles, put them in your right hand. We're going to do our profession of faith. You know, when you guys see an usher, say thank you for being an usher. These people in the media uh, booth right there, the sound and the media team, say thank you to them. They, they don't have to be here. They choose to be here. The teachers and the nursery workers, say thank you to them. Say thank you to them. Thank you for teaching my children. Because some of us don't teach our children the word. The teachers teach them. We got to teach our kids the word. I mean, we got to read the word to them. At least pronounce it to them in Jesus' name. So say it like you mean it, men. Put some bass in your voice. Say, this is my Bible. This is my 
I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'll never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, the indestructible, ever living seed of the word of God. I'll never be the same. I don't want to be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. You may thump your Bibles right there and then, amen. Have a seat in Jesus' name. We've been talking about the, about the last six weeks, we've been talking about the, the matter of the heart. The matter of the heart. The heart matters. The heart matters for every one of us. And every one of us has a heart. Thank you, sir. Every one of us has a heart. And I'm not talking about the, the organ that pumps blood. I'm talking about the soul, the emotions, the internet, the intro. Uh, yeah, yeah, forget it. Intellect, thank you, intellect. Uh, our thoughts, what we think. I want your hearts to be challenged today. I don't want you to be uh, satisfied where you're sitting right now. I don't. I know you guys are like, man, what a pastor that is. No, I want the word to challenge you. That's how you changed, Mike, right? Did the word challenge you here, right? I know, you know, at times you'd be driving home with Ross like, I don't care what he says, that little short sucker man. I don't care what he thinks about me. Right? We all did it. Right? Didn't you guys do it? Raise your hand if you did it, if you did it. Amen? I've done that. When I was sitting in there, a pastor, I said, I don't care what he says, man. I said, man, if he wasn't my friend, I would have punched him already, man. You know? Right? Amen. Exactly right. That's right. If we love each other, we're going to tell the truth to each other. We're not going to be ugly with one another. I know that happens, especially in marriages, you know. But if you have a good friendship, you have a good uh, 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 sister, cousin, a niece, you're going to have your little differences, right? And I want you to know before the, the sun, before the calm comes, there's storms. There's, there's a, 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 a poem that I just remember this word. It says, before the darkest, before the light, it gets the darkest. And that's what happens in our lives. Before things begin to smile and things get better, the first five years of your marriage, you love them the first six months, the first year. You love that brother. I mean, look right into his eyes when he's talking to you. Like, oh, my God, this guy's my world, man. Oh, I could eat him up right now, right? And vice versa, right? You see, oh, man, I, man, Lupe is fine, man. I, man, I just got to follow her all the way home. I don't even want to go home no more, right? Amen? You, you know, we all did that stuff, Amen? Then after a year, like, oh, Lord, can you remove them out of my life? <laughs> no, no, that's, it's part, it's part of life. It's, life is called a journey. A journey is called life, I'm sorry. Uh, the journey is called life, and we all have to go through it. You, you're going to have your goods, and you're going to have your bads. Sometimes you're going to eat some steak and potatoes, and sometimes this is going to be just some soup, the broth, you know. Amen? And sometimes broth is good, you know? Depends where you're at, you know, in life, you know? So we got to understand that God is doing a work in our lives. The Bible says that the good work, be confident of this very thing, that the good work he begun in you, Thomas, he's going to finish it. But we have to be confident. Que lo va a terminar. El trabajo lo va a terminar. All we got to do is go along with the program. A lot of us don't go along with the program. We want our own little program. I ain't got to follow them, you know, like I was saying earlier. 
Yeah, pastor, man, he always wants everyone to come up here clean and, you know, mow the lawn. Well, how's it going to get done if the church don't get it done? Well, what about you, pastor? Yeah, what about me? I'm here all the time to do it. Amen? And I'm just asking for some help. And, you know, that, that, that's what it takes. It takes a village to raise a, a child. It takes all of us. I, I, like I tell you guys, if you see a little boy walk in that uh, room, that uh, uh, restroom, and you, didn't, you saw somebody, a man go in there before him two, three minutes, I expect you to follow that little young boy in there. That little girl, if you're a woman, you go in there. And they can look at you and say, what are you doing? Nothing. What are you doing? You know, and when they're done, you dummy, huh? Okay, let's go. You, you protect those kids, even if they're not yours. I do it. Those kids aren't mine. My kids are already grown, and God, I only have one here. Here she is. But spiritually, you guys are all my children. I'm your spiritual father, most of you guys. Amen? And that's why we get upset with one another. Have you ever got along with your father all the way through your whole life? Raise your hand for I can call you a liar. You know, no, no way, man. We all argue with our fathers. As long as you don't cuss at them, as long as you don't disrespect them, you know, you can have a dis, uh, uh, disagreement. Thank you. You can have a disagreement with all that stuff. But I always told you that we got to learn not to react. We used to react when we were out there in the streets, right? We used to react when we were in the flesh. We got to learn to respond. Don't react. Have a response. Let them say what they have to say. And some of you wait till uh, they're talking and talking, and you're not waiting to, to hear. You, you, you're listening to have an answer. Instead of, answer, instead of listening to what's being said, what is being said? What is he saying? Where's his heart? Where's his mind at right now? Where's her mind? Where's her heart at? You got to think. You got to be smart. You got to be quick to hear and slow to. But we don't do that. A lot of Christians do not practice that. We say it, but we don't. I talk to men here all the time, and, and they're under me in the sense of learning. But when I get to conversation with some of them, they just talk and talk and talk. I'm trying to give something in, and they keep on talking while I'm talking. I'm like, oh, my God, never mind. Forget it. Go ahead. Say what you got to say. And when they're done, I just walk away. I got nothing to say. You, you know it all. You say it all, all the time. We got to learn to be quiet. Amen. Go, go to, uh, what did I write down? I just wrote this down. This came to me just right now in my office. Uh, James 4, 1, uh, James 4, 1 through 3. Santiago 4, 1 al 3. I speak a little Spanish, but lo hablo bien mochito. That's why I don't speak it, Judy, because lo hablo bien mochito, bien feito. So, I'm kind of embarrassed just to, I'm not embarrassed of who I am. I am a Mexican, you know what I mean? I'm an American first, and then I'm a Mexican second. My parents are Mexican from Mexico, but I was born here. But my parents are both from Mexico. All right? Amen? But yo nací aquí. En los estados, right? So now they call us Chicanos, right? <laughs> Chicans. But here it says, right here, look it, check it out. Where do wars and fights come from among you? We're going to get the answer. I want that to settle in you right there. I want that to drop in you. Where do wars and fights come from among you? And you don't have to be married. Because, young man, we can fight with ourselves, right? In our own little mind, our own little thoughts. Amen? I know I do. I argue with myself at times. I, I'll, angel man, cut it out. Be quiet. Thinking the wrong stuff. And I'm not talking about perverted. Just think about things that, you know, I could have came back at that brother. <laughs> but you, that's not the right way to do it. Can I get an amen? We don't want to get back at him. I, I want to reason. How can two walk together unless they 
reason. That means how they got to talk with each other. They got to work it out. They may not like the end, end of it, but you know what? We got it out. And that's where separation comes. That's where divorce comes from. Because there's no communication. And that's what he's talking about. If you, if you want to read a, a, a practical book, if you want to read a practical book, read the book of James. It's a very practical book on how you should live your life as a Christian. If you never read it, shame on you. Because you should read this book. Because he's going to instruct you how you should conduct your life, how you should think, how you should give money, not to think more of yourself, where to sit. Let's go on. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from the desires for pleasure then war, uh, that war in your members? Our desires are wrong. We desire about things about power, prestige, lust, money, beauty, all that, position. We battle within all that stuff. And we desire the wrong things. What's the next one right there, Mihai? I just added that. Oh, oh, you're ahead of me. Come on now. Very good. Your lust, you lust and you don't have. Lust doesn't mean sexually. We do as Americans because what they show us on that TV, everything's lust. Did you know that uh, kids by the age of three or four are already watching porn? Three, four years old, they're watching porn on, the, on your phone that you give them and you're not paying attention because you don't want to hear them. You'd rather give them a, a thing that can uh, uh, give them uh, entertainment than you spending time with them. Remember when we were kids, we used to play hide and go seek, ju uh, jump rope, right? Scotch, uh, what's that thing we used to? There you go, that one right there. You know, we used to do all that. We didn't have those games, right? You had to use your imagination. You had to have friends to come play with you. Red Rover, Red Rover, sin, you know, gal over, you know, things like that, you know? There's no gal here. Amen, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> you know, amen? So he says that you lust and you do not have. You murder. I'm not talking about killing and shooting. I'm about you kill with your, your mouth, with your tongue, snakes, vipers. That's what Jesus said to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Your snakes, your vipers. We can't be that. We can't be in that little snake pit, male or female. And a lot of people think it's just the women that are snakes. No, men are snakes too. King Cobras. <laughs> not that one. <laughs> you lust and do not have. You murder and you covet. That means covet means that you, you're greedy. You want everything. You're jealous for things. Someone has it. You want to go better, a better them. They get a 2017. I'm going to buy 2019. Oh, you got a one-bedroom? I'm getting a two-bedroom. And you don't even get it. You're just talking. Amen? You just want stuff that other people have. You got to learn to be content with what you have. You got to learn to be satisfied in your life. Amen? And God will give you, when, when, you, when your faith and your life satisfy God, he's going to give you the desires of your heart. When we worship God, not with music and all that. This is fine. This is beautiful. We should worship God the way we do. But when you can get up and just have a song in your heart. Have you ever sang a song? And you, you know, you have the melody in your head, but it's coming out way out of melody. But you're still singing it, right? I know I do. All the time. Almost every day. I sing a song. He just drops it in my heart. You know, and I just begin to sing it. So he says, they co you covet and you cannot obtain. He's telling you why. 
Because you lust, because you murder, and you covet. So you can't contain, you can't get the things you want. You fight and you war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. Go to the next one. One more minute, please. You ask and you do not receive because you ask in a miss with the wrong motives. You want things that aren't yours. Some of you people are funny. Talking about the whole church generally. You pray for someone's husband or someone's wife. That belongs to someone. That person belongs to a, a, already a husband and a wife. You can't be praying for them. Some of you open doors for, for women. I see you. I watch you here. You guys run over there. Here you go, hermana. And your wife's over there like, really? Brother ain't opened my door in about five years. Yeah. No, serious. You ain't even talk to your, you never even talk to your wife like this. Send up soda pop. This is my daughter, guys. So I'm not getting, you know. But you talk to a sister like this. <laughs> but never even got that close to your wife. You know, talk to your wife like. <laughs> Did you get it? Uh, oh, you're funny. <laughs> Come on, amen. I'm just trying to be, I'm trying to be real. In today's society, the way we do things here in life, we're Christians too and we're doing this. Come on. Oh, I never sinned. Yes, you have. Every one of us have sinned. And we all fall short of the glory of God. But that doesn't mean we practice sin. We shouldn't be practicing sin. Do we sin? Yes. Do we fall and we trip? Sure we do. Every one of us does. The best way to get rid of sin is what? That who, who knows? The best way to get rid of sin. There it is. Repent. Repent. As soon as, it, soon as a thought comes in, Father, forgive me for that thought. Because if you think it, then it drops in your heart. From your heart, it comes out of your mouth. We're going to read that right now. And boom, all of a sudden you're in trouble. Because you just gave it life. It doesn't have life when it's here inside of you. It's just a thought. Just like temptation. Because you get tempted to sin doesn't mean you sin. It's a temptation. But when you follow through on that temptation, now you sin. And now you need to repent. You need to ask God, forgive me. I mean, don't just say, hey, Father, forgive me. You know, I just messed it up again. No, that ain't the way you do it. From the heart. Father, I'm sorry. Blew it, man. I don't know how many times it's going to take, but here I am again, Lord. And God knows the heart. And we have to be careful with our uh, 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 watchful. I, wanna, I don't like to use the word careful. I don't like to use that word. But we have to be watchful with our words, our thoughts. I don't tell my kid when he's leaving out the house, be careful. I never tell my sin, my daughter that. My sons, I don't tell them that. Be watchful. Watch your surroundings. Know who's around you. If you feel something, walk away from it. Spirit of God speaking to you. Right? Doesn't, and sometimes we don't do what the Spirit of God tells us. You guys heard this example many times. I'm driving down the 55, right, or the 91. I want to get to the 55 where I live at. And all of a sudden, you know, I hear like, get off right here. Get off on Euclid. Uh, I don't want to get off on Euclid. That's like two miles away still, you know. I still got a ways. And I don't listen. I keep going. All of a sudden, there's a tra a, 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 a accident. There's an accident a mile ahead. And now you're all caught up in traffic because you didn't listen. If you would have listened to your spirit, it got off. could have kept on moving. But we don't listen. Right? He says, you ask and you do not receive because you ask in a miss that you may spend it on your own pleasures. God will give you what you want sometimes because we're spoiled children. Don't you give your kids stuff that they don't deserve? 
Every one of us, when they were younger, they talk back to you. They don't take out the trash. They don't make up their beds. They don't uh, uh, wash the, the tub out or the toilet or nothing like that. Amen? But I'm hungry. Okay. Let's go get something to eat. Let's go get something to eat for you. Spoiling these children. That's all you do. And a lot of you grandmothers are, are guilty of that. I didn't get no amen from the grandmas, man. Spoiling those kids. Shouldn't be doing that. There's not, your, there's not yours to do. My daughter asked me to do stuff. I don't do it. Because this is her house. These are her children, not my children. Because you're gonna you're gonna ruin those kids, and yeah, you're gonna ruin those kids, and you're gonna have two parents that are not happy with you. Because they're not telling them to go drink alcohol, go fire one up, go sleep with a, a guy that's not your husband, right? You wouldn't tell nobody that, right? Okay, well I'm gonna talk to this side. You guys, you guys would, so I'm going to stay over here. Amen. <laughs> you know, amen, exactly. No, you can't do that. You can't live like that. That's a fight. Amen. So he says, you ask and you do not receive because you ask and miss that you spend it on your own pleasures. You, you do it for your own gain, for your own prestige, for your own position. I'm, yo soy la abuela. <laughs> We're not to do those things, or we shouldn't do those things. Ask them if they could have soda pop. You don't know if they have problems with uh, diabetes. You don't know that. And you're giving them soda pop. You're giving them candy. You're giving them cake and all that stuff. Give someone some shrimp. They, they may be allergic, uh, uh, allergic to shrimp or walnuts. Amen? And they're little kids, and you, don't, you didn't even ask. You just gave them because you like it. You know, when you get your babies, what are they allergic to? Amen? Hopefully they say McDonald's. <laughs> allergic to McDonald's. No McDonald's. So let's go to my... That, that wasn't even my text scripture. That's what God gave me this morning. Because there's a lot of people in our church that, and I know there's more than just one of you guys in this church, couples, singles that are here in this church. You guys are starting trouble. We've got to stop all that stuff. I'm the pastor of this church, and I'm telling you, you guys love trouble. You love drama. You love, I'm going to say it like this, you love pedo. A lot of you do. Everything's going good. All of a sudden, you got to throw a little monkey wrench in there. It's not supposed to be like that. This one's hot. It's not supposed to be like that. When it's going good, let it go good. Because there is going to be a time that it's not going to go good. So let this season be good. Amen. And if you blow it, doesn't mean that, you know, I'm going to continue just blowing it. Because we did that. I know I did that. If I'm going to get in trouble, <laughs> exactly, I'm going to go all the way. I'm staying out two, three days. If I'm going to get in trouble for coming home at 1 o'clock in the morning, like if I was a little boy and you're 35, 38, if I'm going to get in trouble, I'm going to get in trouble real good. That's how we used to teach, act, right? So I did that, but it didn't, I didn't win. You don't win. You think you won. You don't win. Can I get an amen over here? Amen. <laughs> Most of us, you know. So uh, go to uh, Matthew 15, 1 through 20. I, I'm not going to get through it. I hope I do. This is, 
This is Jesus and the, and the scri scribes. And he teaches them because he's talking about tradition. And a lot of us do things traditionally because mama did it, grandma did it, mama did it, my aunts did it, so I'm doing it. Grandpa did it, my dad did it, my thews did it, so I'm doing it. We, 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 finally, we, we find and follow those things religiously, which is not even our religion. We're doing stuff that we shouldn't even be doing. We know better now. Amen? And we still do it because this, this, is, this is the way the De Leons do it. This is the way the Rodriguez's do it. This is the way the Smiths do it. You're wrong. You are wrong. I'm Pastor's telling you, and if you got any questions, come talk to pastor. Don't go gossip with sister gossip. Brother gossip, don't go over there. Come talk to pastor. Because I hear a lot of stuff that I said that I didn't say, but pastor said. So if you want to talk to me, come talk to me. And I'm not going to get up all in your grill or nothing like that. We're, we're going to talk, right? I correct people a lot, but I do it in love. I'm not here trying to show you that I'm a theologian or anything like that. I want you to live a correct life. I want you to live an honorable life, a life of integrity, an honor of respect, a life of respect. Amen? That's what I want. Thank you. One person. Thank you. That wants to live in honor and integrity. This is how we're to live as Christians. And this is what Peter. Peter, this is what Jesus is talking to the, to the uh, uh, Pharisees and, his, and the scribes. Here it is. Then the scribes and the Pharisees who were from Jerusalem came to Jesus saying, Why do your disciples, Jesus' disciples, you're Jesus' disciples, every one of you are. You guys are disciples of Jesus and second disciples of Turning Point Fellowship. If this is your church and I'm your pastor, this is it. You guys are listening to all kinds of other people outside. They got your ear. More than they got, the pastors got your ear. Yeah, it's quoting them and watching them and, you know, yay man and all this and that. And don't even go to church here. We need to if this is your place and you're getting fed, this is where you come. Amen. We're not going to barbecues. We're not going to the beach on Sunday. We're not going to the Ram game. You do that once in a while, yeah, that's fine. But if it's happening two, three times a month, something's wrong. You're not connected here. And I'm not telling you to leave or nothing like that. You know, find a place you get connected where you're getting fed, where you're getting built up. That's what you want. Yeah, you want a church that the pastor is going to correct you. That you know what, you can knock on my door and I'll open my door. You guys, every one of you talk to me personally, right? You got, most of you got my phone. Probably about 75, 80% of you have my phone number. I'm not going to hide my phone number from you guys. You guys are my people. And I'm your pastor, amen? amen. If you want to speak to me, we can talk. Why do your disciples transgress? transgress the traditions of the elders of the past. For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. Remember that when we were kids? You better wash your hands and this and that. If not, you're in sin. You're in sin. You're going to get your hands whipped. You know? And I, I did it on purpose. As I got in the net knowledge of God, I was in plumbing. I like, I'm eating this without washing my hands. Jesus' name, thank you, Father. I'm not going to grab the whole thing, but I would get a napkin. I didn't wash my hands. Don't do it. I did that because I had a relationship with God. Don't you guys do that stuff. You got to know who God is. Amen. He answered and he said to them, why do you transgress the commandments of God because of your Traditions. Why are you putting the traditions before the word of God, before the commandments of God? That's what he's saying. Thank you, sir. He answered, oh, for, uh, for God, 
for God commanded, saying, Honor your father and your mother. Oh, here we go now. Honor your father and your mother, and who curses his father's mother, let him be put to death. <laughs> He's talking in the Old Testament right now. Jesus Christ operated in the Old Testament under the law. And what he came to do was set us free from the law. He didn't do, he didn't do away with the law. He fulfilled the law. He didn't erase the, command, the Ten Commandments. He did not. That's the ten he gave. All the other ones, men written, were written. But he gave the Ten Commandments that we would live by them. Not that, okay, if you blow it, you blow it, but God's grace is there for you. You're not doing it because you want to, because you're, you're a little short of knowledge and obedience. But you say, whoever says to his father and mother, what, uh, whatever profit you may have received from me is a gift for God. He's talking about the tithe and the offering. He's talking about helping your parents. You know, I, I can't give you money today. I can't give you money this month. You know why? Because I got to give it to the church. I got to give it to this ministry. We're to take care of God's people too. First, if you took care of your money, you would have money to tithe, offer, and give away. I operate in that. I operate like that. I'm not a rich man, but I got more than enough. You guys got uh, uh, leftover foods in your, in your refrigerator? Raise your hands if you got leftover food in your refrigerator right now. It gets old, you're going to throw it away, right? You've thrown away old, old food, right? Because you got more than enough. If you don't throw it away, your kid will throw it away. He sees it like, oh, that was three days ago. Right? Throw it, it's already three days old. It's got to go. If you're Mexican, you can go five, six days. You know. <laughs> just nuke it. Just nuke it. He says, they rather keep the tradition than honor their parents. We got to learn. Then he need not honor his father or mother. Thus, uh, you have made the commandment uh, of God of no effect by your tradition. We're to honor our, our parents. When my father was alive, I gave him money every month. I gave my father money. I give money to people that are from our church and not our church, and I'll give them money. I was having breakfast yesterday, uh, Friday, and looked at my wallet. And I got it. Just blessed the brother that was eating breakfast with me. I'm not lacking any good thing. I don't have no money in my wallet right now. No money in my wallet. But I, I can go to, to the bank and pull out a $100 bill, a $50 bill, a $20 bill, a $10 bill, a $5 bill. We just have to learn how to take care of our money and not have money rule over us, that we rule over money. Can I get an amen? And you learn that, thank you. You learn that principle, you're going to be good. Go to the next one, baby, please. Thank you. Hypocrites! Why did I, uh, Isaiah prophesy about you? Because this is 400 years before Jesus, saying, these people draw near to me with their mouth. Talk about Jesus. Worship God. Do all that stuff, sing and dance before God. But our hearts are far from God. I'm being honest with you guys right here, right now. We say a lot of things, but we don't mean them. We just give them some lip uh, service. That's all. Because imagine if you really weighed your words and you really meant what you said and say what you meant. You'd be a powerful person. You'd be full of the things of God if you kept your word. 
If you shook your hand, shook somebody's hand and said, we're going to do it this way, shake a hand. And you kept your word, people are going to love you. They're going to respect you. They're going to honor you because you keep your word. But we break our word as soon as we walk out. We say things, oh, Pastor, I'll see you. I'll see you next Sunday. I don't see you for the next three Sundays. And they say, you know, you got my palabra. You don't have a word. And I've told brothers that. You have no word. With me, you have no word. I don't care what you tell me, you have no word. Women, you have no word, some of you. Because you don't keep your word. We got, they're going to know us by our fruits. I know some of you guys is like, oh, my God, this guy's rough. No, I'm just being honest. Some of you break your word all the time. We got to stop that. These people draw near to me with their, go back. There you go. These people draw near to me with their mouth and, uh, honor, me, and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Don't honor God. We don't honor God. I'm not going to go there. I want to go there, but I'm not. Go ahead. The next one, please, man. And in vain, an emptiness, and a vast of nothing, they worship me. Teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. They're not teaching the word. A lot of pastors behind these pulpits are not teaching the palabra. They're not teaching the word. They're teaching their own feelings, their own emotions, their own thoughts. But they're not teaching the word of God. That's why people aren't changing. And that's why they got, and I'm not saying all of them, but a lot of them got a lot of full houses. I think if I went to the, those full houses, Pastor Joe, they would tell me, brother, you can never come back here. You'll never come back here, brother. You done offended 500 people in my church. Because they took offense. How can a dead man be offended when we're dead to Christ? Dead in Christ, I'm sorry, when we're dead in Christ. How can we be offended? You get offended because you're in the flesh. People shoot, shoot at me all the time. Darts all the time. I got the shield on, baby. <laughs> got the helmet of salvation on, baby. You know, you ain't going to dent my helmet. Yes, you are. You're going to dent my, my shield. Yes, you will. But no weapon that's formed to be used against me will prosper. <laughs> Amen. Any word that rises up in judgment shall and will be condemned, for this is my rightful, die, my rightful way in Christ Jesus. Amen. This is how we have to live. They view, they, they're, they're vain, they, and they're and in vain they worship me, teaching doctrines <clears throat> of commandments of men, of men, not the palabra, not the word of God. And that's why on Thursday nights I invite you to come. We go line upon line, chapter by chapter, line upon line, precept by precept. If you want to learn the Bible and not learn these little uh, cliches, there's a lot of cliches out there and you guys think it's Bible. It's not. It's a cliche. Thank you. We need the word. And I've been telling our church, what do we need? Consistency. You want to grow? You want to be mature? You want to know the word? You want to understand the word? You need to be consistent. You need to be consistent in your fellowship. I can't make you be consistent. I can only encourage you. I'm tired, too. I get calls at 9 o'clock, and I go to the hospital. We've got to be there till 12, 1 o'clock. My best friend just died two days ago, my best friend. I've known him since I was 14 and a half, 15 years old. He was like a brother. There's friends that stay closer to you than a brother does, the Bible says. And that's, that was my friend. My friend. I cried for a man that wasn't my blood. I'm still hurting, tripping right now. That's three deaths right here in one year. My little brother, my dad, and now my best friend. And some of you guys get a, a bite and it's over. I won't be at church for the next three weeks. 
stub my toe. <coughs> Don't cough in front of me because I know what you're trying to do. <coughs> I know, I know you're not coming to church next week. I understand. Just sit in the back. That's all you got to do. You got a little cough or stuff like that. Because if you were at work, you went to work, you would go to work with a cough. Got to get that in, my brother. Got to have that money. Amen. Got to make that money. So we'll go to church like that. Can I get an amen? Let's go. Uh, I'm not going to apologize, guys. When he had called the multitude to himself, he said to them, hear and understand. Not what goes into the mouth defiles a man. Not the, not the shrimp, not the lobster, not the three pies. Like people say, oh, you eat all that, you know, that's against the, 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 the uh, old law. You don't know the New Testament. Because if you saw Peter's vision, he said, all this is all good. All you got to do is pray and believe that it's clean. Amen? Got to know the word of God. So it's not what goes in the mouth that defiles a man. It's not what he's eating. What comes out of the mouth uh, that defiles a man. This, his disciples came and said to him, do you know what the Pharisees uh, were? Did you know that the Pharisees were off, uh, offended when they heard these sayings? Like some of you guys are going to be offended by what pastor's saying today. Pharisees. Sadducees will be offended today. How are we not going to come back to church? I love you. I'm going to love you when you come to church and you don't come to church, I'm going to love you. If you agree with me or don't agree with me, I'm going to love you. Because that's what God told me. He didn't tell me to like you. He told me to love you. And that's what we do as Christians, amen? We love each other. That's what he tells us to do. This, his disciples came and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard these sayings of telling Jesus that? The living word. And Jesus was like, okay, let me know when, you, when you're tripping because I ain't tripping. He says, but he said and said, every plant which my heavenly father has not planted will not be, will, uh, will be, will not be, will not planted, will be un, uprooted. If we don't belong to God, we're going to get offended and we're going to walk away. Many of you walk away from church and you walk away from a guy that called you, a man that called you, you called him your pastor. You never even asked him if you could leave. You never even did it the right way. When it's honorable. If you're part of my church and you're going to go to another church, I'm not mad at you. But you should come talk to me. Because how would you like it if your son just went out the back door and just got in his car, grabbed his clothes, and took off, and you're like, what the heck happened to him? You know, he hasn't been home for five days. Because he didn't respect you. She didn't respect you. He just walked away from you. They have no respect. But to respect one another, honor one another. I'm trying to teach you guys something about Christianity. But he answered and he said, every plant which my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. If you don't belong to Jesus, you're going to be uprooted sooner or later. And you're going to walk away from Christianity. You may not say it with your mouth, but your actions are going to show it. How do you vote, Pastor Joe? With your feet, right? That's what he tells me. People ain't showing their voting that, you know what, they don't, they don't want to be here, Pastor Angel. They vote with their feet. We vote with our tithe and our offerings. Do I agree with Turning Point Fellowship and their teaching? If you do, you offer and you tithe. Not because I make you, because this is my church. I love Jesus, first of all, and I love what they're doing here. Can I get an amen? amen. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into the ditch. And that's what happens. A lot of you women have power. And I'm not picking on the women. But a lot of you women have more power than what you know. And you use it. And your, chi your, oh, your children, I almost said that. <laughs> your, your husband will follow them. 
What happened? Oh, we're not going to your church no more, Pastor. Why? Oh, because Fuluna, Fulona, whatever her name is, Fuluna, Sutana, Sutana, already told us to, we're going to another church. Oh, okay. Because she said, that's not, that's out of order. The house, the head of the house is the man. And if you're a single woman, then you are the head of the house. But you lead that house by the, by the word of God. Amen. Because if not, it's the blind leading the blind. You're just going to fall into a ditch. You're going to get lost. Go ahead, real quick. Give me five minutes. Can I have five minutes, Mio? All right. Give me five minutes. Get five from everybody. We'll be here all day. Amen. Then Peter answered and said to him, explain this parable to us. Teach parable. Teach us this, this story you just told us. It's a deep one. It's very simple, but you got to understand it because you're born again. This is how you begin to understand the word of God. God begins to open up your mind, your eyes. You begin to see God, God's way. His ways are not our way. His thoughts are not our thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways higher than ours, than the earth, he says. But he has given you the mind of Christ, the Bible says. So you do have the mind of Christ. We're not ignorant to the things of God. The Bible says we're not ignorant to the devil. We know the word. You know the truth from a lie. Amen. When your child is lying to you, but you just ain't got the goal to tell them you're lying. You know, you got to be able to tell you, you're lying. You're lying, boy. Little girl, you're lying right now. You're going to hurt their feelings. You're, not, you're going to have to give them McDonald's. Yeah. Oh, next one. So Jesus said, are you still without understanding? You still don't understand what I just explained to you? Here we go. We're going to explain it to you real quick. Do you not yet understand whatever enters into a mouth, goes into the stomach, and it is eliminated. You guys understand what that's saying? Spiritually, symbolically what it means. What you eat is going to go out of you sooner or later, right? That's what he's telling you. He says, but those things would proceed out of the mouth from the heart, and they defile a man. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart. They defile man. What you say, I was only kidding. I was just joking. I didn't mean it. Yes, you did. Because it came out of your mouth. You just didn't like the, the uh, response you got. So you, you clean it up. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. That's why we got to be quick to hear and slow to speak. That's why. Because the word will back itself up. We're going to go ahead and finish here, and we'll start that next week in Jesus' name. Come on, let's bless the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. So let's be watchful what we say to each other. Let's honor one another. That's why I have you guys calling each other brothers and sisters. I wouldn't cuss at my little sister whatsoever. And if you cuss at my little sister, then you're going to know, Pastor, because <laughs> that's my little sister. And just like you guys, you guys been in my council sessions, the people that are married. I'm not for you and I'm not for her. I'm for the marriage and the family. Amen. That's what I'm here for. Here to bless your family and bless your marriage. You guys are going to have your differences, but we're going to work that out. If you're willing to work it out. If you're not, you won't work it out. You're just going through the emotions and stuff like that. You got to learn how to work it out with the faith. With the faith, by faith, in the word of God. Can I get an amen? amen. And sometimes things don't work out. <laughs> amen. Sometimes it doesn't work out the way you wanted it to work out, but it still works out at the end. We still get eternal life. Amen. Father, we bless you and we thank you. We thank you for your word, for your word is spirit and your word is truth. Your spirit is life. 
And we thank you, Father, that every word that proceeds out of your mouth, Father, does not return void, but accomplishes all that you purpose it to do in our lives. So we're going to thank you, Father, for the faith, for the life. Thank you for the courage, for the boldness. Thank you for the understanding, of the justice of your word, for the wisdom of your word that lives in our hearts. Your word that we have hidden in our hearts that we would not sin against you, Lord God. For when we don't, if we don't sin against you, we won't sin against our brother. So we thank you and we bless you, Father, for our children that are here, our youth that are here receiving the word of God. We thank you that life is changing. Changing our hearts and changing our minds, transforming our lives by the power of your word, Lord. We need your word. We need your word, Lord. We're thirsty for your word. We're hungry for your word, Lord God. We want more and more. We want less of us and more of you, Lord. Teach us. Instruct us in the way that we should go and the way we should live, our lifestyle. Teach us the lifestyle of Jesus Christ. We want to be like Jesus. We don't want to be like each other, Lord. We want to be like Jesus. We don't want to compare ourselves to one another. That's foolish. We want to compare ourselves to this word that is the living word, Jesus Christ. So we honor you and we bless you, Father, for the drive home. We say no accidents, no breakdowns, no flat tires, not even a ticket on the way home, Lord. That you divinely protect us, our cars, our homes, Lord. That you watch over our homes, inside and out. We know and we believe that there are angels that surround us and surround this building inside and outside, Lord. We've already seen that power, Lord God, the power of your angels protecting this building, protecting our lives. We've seen it. We've experienced your power, your grace, your divine protection. Father, protect our minds, protect on our hearts. Teach us to walk in wisdom, Lord, and speak in wisdom. Teach us, Father, to be quick to hear, but slow to speak. Thank you and I bless you, Father, for every minister here, the media, the sound, the ushers, the nursery, the teachers in the, in, the, in the school, Lord God, our youth ministers, our worship team, Father, our armor bearers, our board and our council, our uh, administration team. Thank you, Father, that you meet every one of our needs. We're not lacking in any good thing. We say and we declare that we have more than enough, Lord God. We thank you that our comings and our goings have been blessed of you, Lord God. So I thank you, Father, for our first-time visitors here on a Sunday. Lord, on a Thursday, Lord, I thank you. And I bless you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. 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 Let me just have a... I've, I do have one announcement. Every Tuesday we have prayer, guys, and it's growing. Our, 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 we started with four people, two, four people. We're up to about 11, 14 people every Tuesday. And it's not about numbers, but I know that there's power in numbers. And the more we come together to pray, the more powerful it is, the, the greater our faith is going to be for one another. How many of you guys have children that need prayer? Raise your hand. Don't be ashamed. Raise your hand. Hi, there you go. You guys, your children don't need prayer? Oh, there you go. Amen. Yeah, amen. How many of you guys want to raise? You can get a raise supernaturally. Amen. We all want to raise, right? Some of you guys don't want to raise. Oh, well, praise God. You got money. Amen. Heck yeah. Uh, God can give you the desires of your heart. How many of you guys want a good marriage? A godly marriage. Not a good marriage. A godly marriage. Amen. But we got to pray. We got to pray. 
you know, uh, so every Tuesday we pray at 7 o'clock. We're here. Every Thursday we have Bible study. And we learn the Bible. Line upon line, chapter by chapter. We're, we, we're starting our uh, classrooms, our school here. And then we're going to have a, a, a first time, uh, not uh, the new, new beginners. Yeah, new beginners class. We'll be starting that in November. Where some of you that been saved but never know what it, never knew what it was. I got saved, but now what happens? You're going to be taught six principles, seven principles on why you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you'll have a foundation to stand on. And that's what the Bible is. It just is foundation for us to stand on, on the Word of God. That we're not guessing, we're not hoping. We know. We know what the word says, and we're going to believe it, and we're going to stand on it. Can I get an amen? amen. So we have that going on, too. Uh, coming up next Tuesday, following Tuesday, next Tuesday, is it the harvest night? Yeah, it is. Huh? Harvest night, come on out. We're not, uh, for all you people that are on you, uh, YouTube and space, yeah, space, space, Facebook, <laughs> Facebook, sorry about that. We're not celebrating Halloween. We are not celebrating Halloween. Say, we are not, we are not celebrating, celebrating Halloween. 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 No, we're children of light. Right. They're children of dark. We're going to bring the light to them. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We're going to tell them about Jesus Christ. We're going to tell them about the love and the forgiveness of God. That's a good time to come. Yeah. Amen? They're going to come evil, dressed, and all this and that, death and all that. It, don't be moved by that stuff. And don't tell them, oh, that's a good costume. And maybe some of you Christians, Bobos, you guys do that stuff, you know. It's evil. You ain't got to tell them that. You just walk in who you are. Love on them. Give them candy. If you write some signature, uh, some scriptures, drop it in their box. You can just fold it. it. You don't have to tell them. Just drop it. But when they open it, what's this? They got a scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him would have... Uh, not perish, but have everlasting life. Drop it in there. But come on out. We're, we're going to dress our cars up. You can dress too. But you're not going to be all dressy nurses and stuff like that, you know. <laughs> Bat women and showing everything, you know. We're not doing that stuff no more. Amen. We're not doing none of that stuff. Dress appropriately. Thank you. But you can come. You can come in your little costumes and all that and have fun, right? We have fun. We're going to have hot dogs. We're going to have some drinks out there, soft drinks, soft drinks. We're going to have soft drinks and hot dogs and things like that. So come on out. Bring your kids out. It starts at 5, 5 to 9. We'll be going out. They're going to have games, you know. You can have games to put out there, and you can have fun, and they can win uh, prizes and things like that. You can come with a couple of prizes, you know, and give them out $5 gift cards to McDonald's <laughs> <laughs> and things like that. But, you know. We're supposed to be the most happiest people on earth. Not Disney, not Disneyland. We are. Christians are. They can be the dizziest. We're the Disneyest. They're the Disneyest. We're, we're Christians, amen? That's what we're supposed to be in Jesus' name. So invite people. Have them come on out. Be part of it as a church in Jesus' name, all right? Thank you guys for coming out. Is this your first time here, man? You've been here before, huh? Or first time here? Okay. I have a first-time visitor. It's your first time here, too? On a Sunday? You've been here before on a Sunday? Oh, okay. Amen. So we got to uh, get her a card. Oh, he's already on it. Amen. If you don't have a, a card there, you can fill that out. Uh, we're not going to sell your, your things like that. You can just you can write it down for the women's ministry and uh, things that happen, events that happen here at the, at the church. You'll have that. If you guys in the back, Fernando and Seth, if you guys haven't signed one of those up, or yeah, get, get one right there. Uh, and if, you, if any of you guys have not give us a card, fill it out. That way we can put you on our, uh, our email list there. Amen? And someone will give you a call, and they'll just say thank you for coming out. If you need prayer, they'll give you prayer. You know, and they have a contact. They have a contact in Jesus' name. Uh, don't forget we have that women's, what, what day is that, man? The 9th of December. It's 45 bucks. It's really good food, and you have, have a, you're going to have a great, great speaker. 
She's going to come out and speak. There she is up there right there. Amen. She's a great speaker. In Jesus' name, she's a woman's minister. She speaks to women. So uh, uh, come on out and be part of it. It's right here. It's a nice little place. I like it. We're going to have our Christmas party there. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. It's a lot of fun. So uh, just wanted to put that plug in there real quick. What another plug do you have? Okay. Get, yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Uh, I don't know how many men we got up right now, but I know, uh, I know they always want us to stop it about at 90, but I, I let it go for 100 people, you know. But it's 200 bucks. We have all year. As soon as you, you have a whole year to just put 20 bucks a month, and you'll have more than 200 bucks. You can give it to somebody else, you know. In, in Jesus' name. So, but if you want to go see Andy, see Tomas, and see Brother Fred back there, all right? See him back there, amen? And if uh, you, you ladies uh, have extra money and you want to put some seed in there, go ahead. For your husband that never has come, you can drop a seed in there. This is for my husband. This is for my future husband. By faith, by faith. Father, I thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name, we are dismissed. Hug on somebody, shake somebody's hand, introduce yourself to someone right now in Jesus' name.